how do you know who's going to be a really effective speaker for your group online? Virtually everything's gone online now. And you need to be able to support yourself and your team effectively with speakers, with trainers, with facilitators. But it's not just about getting the content. It's about being effective in engaging people and having something that's a, that's a unique approach to it. How do you know? There's all sorts of certifications that have come up for virtual presenters. But there's one that I've found that really, really stands out. And it is brought to you, the, the mastermind behind that. I'd like to introduce uh, Pagin. Welcome. Hi, I'm so excited to be here and talk about virtual presenters of excellence and why we did this. this I'm, thank you so much, Robbie, for having me. You're very welcome, Pagin. And, and what we'll get into is what the depth that you go into. And here's spoiler alert and total transparency. I have applied for and I received this certification. Uh, and I, the reason we're having this conversation is I was so blown away by how rigorous it was uh, that it, I'm, you know, I said we need to, people need to know how much work you put into this because it's, it's, it's incredible what, what you check for for this. Thank you. You know, what I know, so I wear a lot of different hats. And what I recognized is I produce events and have for, for years, very, very large scale to intimate experiences. We book speakers into those events. And I'm also a speaker. I'm also doing what we're doing right now, right? Presenting. But one of the things that I found and what I was seeing was we had some great speakers who would be great on stage, but not really great on camera, doing this as a virtual experience. There is different talents, different skill sets, different abilities when you are doing your work virtually. And so how does a decision maker know whether this person is really high quality? really know how to use a camera. Now, there's a lot of, there are certifications that are out there and I've seen them, you know, they check, the, te they check your technology. They check, you know, your lighting, your, all of this, but the talent of doing a virtual presentation is different. And so we expect you to have the lighting, the technology, we expect you to have that. If you're coming into this certification, what we are doing is really going deep to ensure that you know how to really engage your audience virtually, that you really know how to speak. And so that's why I had to do it. It was it was frustrating for me. I got to tell you, I, I my first conference went virtual March 24th it was going to be live but even at my conference i had hired speakers from around the world and i a year earlier and said they this is all going to be a pre-recorded presentation you're doing right. out of all the people we were hiring most people didn't want to do it they were too afraid to do that it was interesting so that's where this started saying we got a problem houston we got to do something right now the, the thing is I, I would say to you that yes, everyone, a lot of these other certifications check technology and this and that, but yours even went so deep in terms of all of the different levels of the audio, the video, the, uh, and then you started asking questions of what happens when things mess up mm -hmm. and share examples of what's happened and how you respond. And, and I know that you know, in our conversations about it after I had submitted mine, you said the one thing you're looking for is the ability to think through because you can never predict what's going to go wrong. You just were looking for that ability to think through. Oh, you hit the nail on the head. We're looking for thinkers, people who have the savviness to know how to deal with things that aren't working out. We also want to have people who are savvy enough 
to know that this is a new, uh, this is a new, mm, I, I'm not going to say new because my, I was booked by the army to do the first virtual presentation over uh, 13 years ago, but it's, it's a different quality that people are looking for, especially now, you know, we've been now six months doing everybody's been on more webinars more videos more zooms more <laughs> courses more things left and right and now people really recognize most people aren't that good so how if you're selecting people do you know that somebody is really good that you know if they could come in they're going to have a slam dunk. And, and the reason I asked the questions was the behind the scene piece, you know, having been a, the being a, a, a meeting professional coordinating things, seeing what's going, I know that there are questions that we want. We need to know. Some of us just don't know how to answer those questions. So that's one of the things I wanted to do. Uh, and, and can I ask what answer one more question about that? Please do. Yeah. So the reason we had this, so we have an extensive application. I know we're going to go through it. We have a, an extensive application where you, the, anybody that's applying has to answer the questions. And here's why. If you can't answer these questions, you can't follow the directions of where we want to go. And I can tell whether you're a pain in the neck to work with or whether you're somebody that I want to work with. So you're coming in saying, I can answer these questions. I know this. I care about your meeting. I care about being the best I can possibly for your meeting. I want people to know that I've gone through this rigorous by choice because I want to show you that I can follow your instructions and I show it to be there. You and I both know we just did a, a you and I did a, a practice on remote, right? Yep. Because I'm being, I was booked as an MC for a platform. My, my excellence depends on me knowing how to use the platforms everybody is on. Well, that's a question. How are you investing in yourself? Right. Right. Well, and that's one thing I found as well with our CAPS members, uh, the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers. Some of them as they've been adapting to this, they've been at all different levels. Like I, I remember in March, I got so many 911 calls about how do you go. But, you know, a lot of them have been going, okay, look, who's available? I want to do a test run, you know, people who hadn't done Zoom before. And I thought that was so professional. This is you, you had a new platform with Remo. You wanted to go in there knowing what you, you know, what you needed to know because you're the professional. Right. And, and you're, you know, you want to make your, who's ever handling your conference, whether it's a meeting professional, whether it's a, uh, a leader in a business organization, you really want to give them the confidence that, that you can handle this and without saying a lot of words, which is why, you know, being able to say, I got this and I do appreciate you doing the interview because I really know that people don't understand the depth that we go into about this certification so we have people that have applied we turn them down we have people that have been angry because they haven't been able to move on because i'm not looking for you as being famous i'm looking for you as being a presenter of excellence and that is and, and you know our committee that you know i my committee is not a committee of peers that, oh, we like her, put it on there. Oh, we know her, put it We, the committee is a committee of professionals who have years, extensive years of experience in. Now, this in, is what blew me away. I've got to say, when you told me about this, let's not just go, oh, the committee. This just, I was like flabbergasted by how amazing this is, this process. So folks, this is really important that, that she puts it through. Yeah. So let me talk to you about the, so let me tell you about the process, which I think is really important, right? So the process is you apply to want to be there. You get led to, and yes, there is a fee. It's some $97. Trust me, I'm not getting rich on this. Uh, but we, here we have a process that goes in. You have uh, an extensive, you have eight page application form that 
you are you 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 apply for and so here are some of the things that I'm, and I'm just my eyes are going over here as I'm just reading the form so from your lighting setup now we want you to describe it because I really we never know what's behind it I don't need to have fancy lights I really don't nobody needs knows it we just need to know that you have lights and you can look great on camera that people can see your eyes it's very important uh, we want to know about your camera and your makeup now that goes in a lot of other technology pieces but do you also have a backup camera do you know how to use your phone as a camera if things go wrong we want to know how people hear you because it's a huge issue of how they're hearing you even myself you know I have a Yeti that's above but when I'm standing we're actually buying another um, kind of microphone to ensure that they can hear us better without the shh sound, right? Uh, we want to make sure that you know how to do that. And, and then you're going to send us a picture because we want to see a picture of the setup. You know what you're saying? What you, we don't, again, we're not looking at you to have a state of the art office. We want to know that you're set up to do um, really good programming. Um, and then we ask people to send samples. And the samples that we send are very specific. In other words, do not send your demo. We don't want to see the demo. We want to see uh, a 15 minute presentation of you sending, sharing your content in a virtual environment. This is really important. It's not you. So people will send us uh, them doing a presentation in front of a sitting audience. That's not what this is about. This is about your in, how you're presenting here. We want to make sure that we get another clip of you sitting because what we found over the time is that we found sitting energy and standing energy are two different things. So we want to see that. We want to see one of you standing. Standing and if you sit. I mean, it's very important because your energy and how you're moving your body. Like right now I'm sitting and so my body is not moving the same way as I would if I was standing. We want to know and have you send us details and a, a segment of a virtual engagement and I have to tell you it's fascinating to see the people that have received this uh, certification of excellence how they do engagement is different than most people how they use their pauses their facial experiences their facial to to engage people how they use their hand movements how they use props how they use they don't use tons of bells and whistles and some of the members are people that you will never know but i'm honored to see them because i've learned from watching them we have a i think it's two of our members who are get this they've been teaching for years special how to teach special ed children through virtual now yeah. if you're thinking about that you think about your toughest audience you try teaching special ed kids through a virtual experience and they had techniques they had things that were when we were watching it was just like we had never seen that they they taught me so much just from watching so we look at that of how you're really engaging people we're looking at uh, any, you know, and of course, you're going to send me any commentaries. The other thing that was very important to us is you had to submit a proof of payment. In other words, you can say that you've done virtual. Your value is determined by if somebody is willing to pay you. So you send us a, a, a proof that you've been paid to do a virtual presentation. Uh, that is immediately destroyed after it goes to one of our staff members. I don't even see it. It's just proof that somebody has invested in you. And I think that's really important when we're going through it. We also want to know about your backup plans. So we have a power. We have statements is how what is your backup plan? What happens if something doesn't work? How do you manage to stay afloat? How do you manage to go? For instance, if there is a, um, a glitch in your electricity, what's the backup plan how are you going to do it some people are using mobile devices some people have backup generators how are you planning this we we need to know and how do you communicate with this is really important how do you communicate with the people watching you and 
your uh, contacts during this glitch because every second that there's a glitch if you're not communicating to the powers that be and the audience it looks bad on them and it looks bad on you so we really want to know about your thoughts and plans you know how do you what do you do if you have a virtual presentation failure we've all had that stuck with us right and and so you you go through this and then there's more because after you fill in that and you send in everything you are asked to have a set up a 30 minute interview with me right. now what you people don't know and it's is Ravi, anytime you want to jump in jump right away but what people don't know is before the interview the committee has done a review and so can i is it right if i share about the committee well, this is the thing this is what i totally I, I was just like blown away that you've done set this up this is so exciting in terms of how you determine if someone fits the certification or not so i just wanted to set that up it is it's like it just the the, the thought that went into it is it, phenomenal. it is when we're talking about having a, a certification especially um a virtual certification of excellence you have to be somebody that people would want to hire you you you've got to be somebody that people would refer and you have to be somebody that even the most obnoxious stiff person would be okay with you being on on stage or on stage being a virtual stage so what i did was i put together a group of four the first person is uh, she's a professional meeting meeting professional she has been in the industry for over 20 years she has been she books very big live keynote and breakout sessions she's very knowledgeable in terms of hiring the right person at the right time and she's also been hiring virtual presenters for over 10 years so she's not new to the game this is she's been conducting virtual programs virtual conferences virtual retreats for over 10 years she comes with a real different look and she knows the difference between when you're on stage and when you're doing live so the reason i wanted her to be evaluating is is this somebody that you would hire is this somebody that even if their content maybe isn't appropriate for your group that you would have no problem promoting them in other groups is are they that good virtually and so when you're thinking about breakouts and workshops all those are paid right breakout workshops trainings there's such a vast uh, array of opportunities for people would this meeting professional say this is a person the second person is someone that hosts high-end dinner parties with people who actually are selected and paid to be in this this connecting environment ceos leaders who come to connect with the right people and open up the doors she is a professional referrer which means that part of her job is to be having her antennas to see you know who might connect with the right person? What are the needs going on? That's what she does. And so I wanted to know if you are watching these, would you refer them? Like what, would you even talk about them at a dinner party? And that's what I wanted to know. I'm getting closer to this because this is really important for you to know. Are you so fascinating, unique, interesting? Do you do this so well? that if people are sitting around a dinner table having wine, would somebody say, oh, I just saw somebody so interesting. She's really fascinating. Or I just saw this man and he was so, how he was doing facilitation was so fascinating online. Would this person be willing to share that? So that was the piece, you know, this, these little nuances right. that know that, how do you communicate that? You can only communicate by people watching you. Then the no. third, 
Go ahead. On that again, if I can, I mean, it's the, the key is there's so many people that in some ways content is not new, right? There's so many people talk about leadership, who talk about mindfulness, who talk about team building, but it's how it's conveyed or the particular approach really that makes the difference, right? Of whether it sticks or not. Yeah, yeah. You know, I always tell people you have to be the unicorn. So every, there's tons, there's thousands of people that talk about leadership, right? There are thousands of people that talk about how to um, get your employees to be the best that they can be. And, and most of the people, <coughs> sorry, most of the people, you know, have their own flair. The problem is, first off, do you have flair? You know, do, do you have, do you know that you're a unicorn in that and what's your flair? Number two is, can you translate your flair through video and through these techniques? And one of the big things that we're finding, is, and I, I speak to a lot of conference planners and organizers. I've been in that, especially in the last six months. And one of the things that's really interesting is authenticity is one of the most powerful tools you can have in this virtual environment. It is critically important that you recognize that people are reading your eyes, they're reading your mouth, they're reading how you're presenting, they're reading where your eyes are looking, they're reading, they, they can see way more than they could when you're on stage or live. Because when you're on stage and live, there's a lot of distraction, right? Your arms are moving, your pants, your your jacket, how your tie is, where you're looking, what's going on. I could see other people across the room. This is not that anymore. This is, I, I see you, I'm with you, I, I want to connect with you. And so they have to trust that you can do that virtually. And so for this particular woman, it for me it was, are they is this person referable? Is this person so good at what they're doing that it's interesting, that it's 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 excellent? It's excellent. I'm not looking for. First off, I don't. I, I'm looking for excellence that I would want to refer. My company's name is going behind this. I. I this is. For the best of the best are you getting me ravi this is something that is so critically important now the third person the the final the third person is um so we have my meeting professional i have my refer the third person is the cross your arms prove it it's that person that would, <laughs> you know it's that person that evaluation time would probably go um you know, probably always find something wrong, right? And that's very important to have. I mean, really important. You want that that critical eye. And so one of the things that we do with him is I he only gets a scale of one to three. Because if I gave him one to ten, everybody would be one to three. So I just do one to three. But his eye is different. He's not he's not a speaker. He's not a meeting professional. He's not a refer. He is a decision maker. He's looking at it from a perspective will this person be someone that we would want in front of our people he doesn't need to do he's doing it as a favor to me right so he he's just not in the industry and yet he's the, the person that will be sitting in the audience and we really want to recognize that so and then the final person is myself and i really i'm i'm I want to cheer you on, but in this particular process, I need to make sure that you're really uh, at the level. Now, I now here's something, Ravi, that I want people to know. Everything I'm saying is talking about excellence. That doesn't mean you're famous. That doesn't mean that you've made a million dollars speaking. It doesn't mean any. It just means that you have invested in your own abilities to educate 
inspire, support, give content, inform, and influence the people you speak to. This is a credential that says, I'm that good. Because in our industry, you know, sometimes we have excellent speakers that never are seen, never are uh, admired, never are showcased. Like a special ed, you know, trainer may not ever be on somebody's grand stage. But that work is so critically important and how they do it is excellent. We have, like yourself, you know, facilitators who do lots of trainings impacting lots and lots of people. And, you know, may never get on to be the top 10 motivational business keynote speaker of the year, you know, on the front cover of some made up magazine, right? It, it may not happen. That doesn't mean that you're not excellent in your craft, in your knowledge, in your ability. And you're also somebody that is trustworthy enough to go for it. So, Ravi, ask me a question about why is this called Power Women Worldwide? And so why do you have guys? Yeah, so actually that is something I was going to ask you. Why do you have guys? It is Power Women Worldwide. And there are a few of us in there for men. So what are we doing in there? So this is a great question because Power Women Worldwide gives a space where, especially from the Power Women Worldwide virtual presenter, because I, as you know, I'm advertising it, I'm speaking about it, I'm sharing pictures. You and a couple of guys have a little uh, the picture that I that that we are putting out in advertising. The reason I do it is a couple of reasons. One is that. In the world of speaking right now, there is a huge trend of looking at social media, looking behind the scenes. Are and, and for men, it's really important that people are, are doing social media searches. How are you talking about women and people of color? How are you showing up in that world? How are you being a scene? And then number two is that on stages, as a matter of fact, there are some people that are doing a, a session today about uh, women speakers on stages and why are there so few. What we've noticed is the way that women get on stages in larger numbers is when we have allies who talk about us or introduce us to opportunities. And because if you're already thinking about it, you know, birds of a feather flock together. So if you're only referring people that look like you, like think like you, then you are not showing your ability to be expansive in the world. You're not understanding what's going on in the world in terms of having a lot of different kinds of people flocking around you. So one of the things that we do when men apply and like yourself, like uh, we have a couple of the other guys is that we do a social media research on you. Did you know you knew that, right, Ravi? So we um, go. That part I did not know. Okay. So How did I show up? <laughs> so we do a social media search. So when somebody applies, because what we're saying is you are a you're a speaker of excellence, and you're an ally. Mm -hmm. Meaning, here's a certification that says we have vetted this particular man. He not only is fantastic fantastic and phenomenal as a presenter. But in his own social media posts, in his own presence, he has always encouraged women, people of color to be sharing the platform for him. He's asked them to be interviewed on their podcast. He's ensured that they're have if he's doing a presentation, he's been looking around saying, hey, you know, you're missing somebody on the stage right they all look like me they're missing somebody on stage it's those kinds of things it's how they're writing how they're saying so that i as a you know my my profession is as a diversity inclusion expert uh, you know i consult with from the military to major corporations uh, 
and being in in the meeting professionally and people say well who can we bring on stage and in this time and age you know there's stuff going on in social media of um, men that you know can make it really dicey for a company a corporation an organization to bring this person on stage it gets dicey when people noticing there's a, something called a gender avenger and they're very powerful they are watching every conference all over the world and seeing who's on stage and what's going on so i wanted to provide an experience where people will look at and say wow we have these women and these guys stand out i really it is so important that i have men stand out who have done work that says and sometimes they don't even know that they're an ally. They just so naturally bring women partnerships in. They bring women on stage. They look for experts. It's such a no-brainer to them that it's natural, so they don't even know that they are. Um, but those of us in the audience, remember, right now over 58% of all managers are women. Uh, really? Yeah. That's interesting almost 62 uh, now it's 72 percent of all uh lawyers graduating are women mm -hmm. uh, when we look at uh, mbas women are graduating from mba schools all over the world at way higher ranks so i think it's over uh, also about 70 percent of women so when you're looking at this well who's the leaders who's watching who's hiring what do we observe what do we see you know there is a look that's like when well, we notice whoa we notice so i wanted to be able to say with the certification is i was noticed i was noticed and i'm going to acknowledge you robbie okay I'm, I'm really going to acknowledge you because this is really important of the people that are applying it takes courage for a man to say i want this certification okay. i really want to prove myself i want to play at a different level i want to make sure that people know me for my excellence and for this uh, being involved with this group so that people can see I'm a player in the new world. I always call it leading in a diverse world. Right. And so I acknowledge you for, I mean, you stepped in the fray before you even know what the fray was. And, <laughs> you know, and, and it's really important. I mean, this fray. So, so, Robbie, ask me about how we're promoting this because this is another picky point for me. Okay. Um, so how are you promoting this? And that, that's really what I'd like to know a bit more about that as well. So one of the things that we I have experienced in my own past, I've had certifications, is that if nobody knows about the certification, what good is a certification? Right. That, you know, people get certifications and then it's like, okay, I'm a certified this and I'm a certified that. But you don't know what that means. Right. So we are at our mounting a campaign whereby, you, like we had the graphic that you have seen for uh, the three guys, where we put it out whenever anybody, uh, when everybody, anybody gets the award, we put out an announcement, we put out their picture, we post it on LinkedIn, we post it on Twitter. And now we're building it in so that over time, you'll see, because we'll, we'll use Hootsuite, we'll always have kind of like a recurring piece going and and going through it and and so that there's constant promotion we're also going to be uh i'm going to be starting to buy placement ads in meeting professional places to say here's a designation learn more click here right because we could buy those banner ads so that's what we're going to doing now we're also ensuring that the word gets out about why this is important because the pain seriously the pain that some meeting professionals are experiencing 
because they brought in speakers who didn't know just breaks my heart because I know so many great, great virtual presenters. The other piece that people need to know about this is once you get their certification, we have a directory that goes out. On that directory, you'll see that, um, can I can I share a screen here? Am I allowed to? I, yeah, yeah, I can. Of course I can, because it's yes, me. You yes, you can. It's at the bottom of the thing. And I should mention, scrolling along is the link to the directory. Yeah. So let me and just... I just need to add this to the stream. So we've got it. Yeah. So do you this all see... This is the directory. Yeah, so this is the directory. And here's something that's really important. Um, every person gets their little box. Wherever you go to highlight, this leads directly to your website. We also have it so that it's set up to go directly to your website. In other words, when they go to the site, they don't go through us. This is your, you earned it, you own it. We're acknowledging you. We want them to find you. I'm not doing anything like, oh, you've got this. You know, you've got to go through us. No. The only time that we have people coming to us is if it's, a meeting professional who says, I don't know who to pick. Can you put a package together of speakers? You know, then we'll, we'll act like a, a bureau at that point. But I don't, I just want you all to get it. I just want you to go and receive it. And it's really, really interesting. So like Dawn, you go, oh, she's a Microsoft person here. That girl was so much fun watching her present something that was so boring, right? Not, not <laughs> but you know, it could be boring, you know what I mean? Uh, yep. But she was engaging, she was really funny. She was really, uh, just the way she engaged you was amazing. So this is it, and here's our, uh, you know, the Certified Virtual Presenter of Excellence. It, these are, they. And we say it constantly show commitment to promoting, creating partnerships, endorsing and sponsoring women. Why is that important? Well, let me tell you why that's important in case you haven't figured this one out. People are buying unicorns. What makes you stand out different than somebody else? How do you prove that? Well, you can prove it, for instance, Robbie, because you have proof. You are showing it. This particular conversation we're having is the depth and scope. So um, we're not looking for everybody to become this. We're only, we're not even looking. We are saying if you are compelled to see your excellence, if you want to go through a process that really deep dives into the process, then you really want to consider um, applying for this. If you yeah, want to have a space where you can um, really be among some of the best speakers from around the world, and we have people from England, Australia, Canada, uh, the US, I have two that are coming in from Singapore. This is a global experience because one of the biggest things that's happening now in the world, because of the virtual world, people can hire you around the world, right? I can hire you here in the States and you don't have to fly and you don't have to go through border and you don't have to do any of that, but I can do that. And that's something that I think everybody needs to recognize. And I'll be quiet. I'll let you ask any questions you want that I didn't well, touch on. No, I think it's it's wonderful. The, and the, the link, if people are looking to get certifications on the screen, the, I think that the thing that just to sort of pull things together here is, you know, some people have analogized the, um, the difference between the on stage and virtual to almost being like the difference between uh, for actors between being on stage or television or movie it's a very different type of acting that, mm -hmm. that you have to do a performance and it's the same thing you know what I'd like to know is 
from what you have seen as what makes speakers excellent? Oh, great. What is it that stands out? What are some of the, the key, uh, key elements that you've seen that distinguish them, that, that are common across, across the board? So one thing that's really common about those who are doing excellence is how they use the camera. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting because a lot of people will present, you know, they'll do the zoom and including me, if I'm doing a lot of things, like I was looking over here and all this, one of the differences that they'll say is I'm going to look over here. So they're looking over here because what we realized is, is the way that they use the camera is the way that they would talk to you if they were at a networking event. So if I'm speaking to you, Ravi, in a networking event and I have my eyes with you, if I start looking over here, or if I start looking at the, you at the gallery, if I start looking over here, if we were one-on-one, -on -one, you'd say, who are you looking at? Wait, what? Yeah. Or you're I'm not interested here. here. I'm going to go somewhere else. Yeah, I'm here. And so one of the interesting things that we've noticed is the comfort level with just looking at the camera and having that be a real experience, knowing that it's a real experience. The other thing about the camera, which is really fascinating, is how they use the camera. So what we noticed from some of the, the, the interesting people is that they would go in and they say, I'm going to have a secret. Can we, can we just have a secret together, you and me? Can we just have the secret? And so they were, you know, or they were stepping back and they were going further back to have more. So they were really utilizing the camera. Like, do this. If you would do this with me, high five. Yes, ma'am. So what happens is us doing this together, it's like we're involved with each other. And so yep. they really use the camera well. Fascinating. The second thing that, uh, and we have, I have seven things, but we're just going to go a couple of them. The second thing is the awareness of the intimacy. And what that means is under normal circumstances, we would be in a non-ownership room, right? whether it be at your office, whether it be at a convention, we would be in a space that is not personal. In this experience, we go into somebody's personal space. They are bringing us into a very intimate experience. Most of them in their home, some of them in their offices, some of them in their bedrooms, right? So we've had people that have watched us while they're in the bedroom and they're, you know, I mean, think about how intimate that is. It is like having a keynote speech speaker sitting on your bed talking to you. Yeah. And so there is a certain level of respect. There is a certain level of honor, of understanding you have invited me to be in your home in your office. You've invited me to see what's around you. You've invited me to be with you in a very intimate experience. And so that sense of valuing and honor and respect must be considered when you're presenting. It's not like we're talking to a whole group of people, even though it feels like you're talking to a whole group of people. You're really speaking to an individual who's sitting in their intimate space. So that's the second thing that I noticed. When we looked at it, it was like, wow, you just felt like they were talking to you. Because that is why we felt that way. You were, we were talking to you. In other words, we don't talk to everybody. This is a real I'm talking to you experience, intimacy. The, the other piece that goes into this is the sense of love. Okay. So there is no more powerful vehicle to communicate the love that you have for what you do, 
how you do it and who you do it to. And so it was consistent, every single one. It was amazing to see the, the love that they had for what they did and the passion and enthusiasm that they brought into it without being loud, without being, you know, bodacious. I mean, I'm bodacious and I'm loud, but consistency <laughs> of love. And this is the thing that's really, really important is people see you. You know, I'm talking with my glasses, but if I go close to you and I'm talking to you and people have done this in some of their programs is you can actually see my eyes, how they're glistening, how they're talking. And if I love it, you can feel it going across this vehicle that we use of the camera, the Internet going through, reaching somebody else's place. We're sending that message out. And that's the other piece. So you have the love and then you have to understand the power of energy. Those of us right. that have been around for a long time, and Robbie, you and I have had a long, lots of conversation. Our energy is being emanated through this vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's being twisted and turned around, and molecules and energy pieces are going through the wires, goes through however it gets to your place, and then is being put together and received. Well, the level of my energy must be high enough that it goes through this vehicle and is reassembled so you receive it. Except all of that dissipates energy. So I am responsible for the level of energy. And that was r really interesting to see in people too. It was by far one of the uh, most interesting experiences. You know, when you start looking at people that are applying and they are really just amazing in what they do. They really got it. And and, and I, I think that's really important that people, so those are the things that I would definitely highlight. There are other things, but those are three, the love, the energy, the camera, just so critically important. This is fascinating to hear because we haven't actually talked about these before. So it's interesting to hear what you've been hearing from speakers that are very different on your page. And yet these are common friends. So I, I, I really uh, appreciate that. Yeah, so, they're, they're really different from industries, expertise, um, knowledge. Uh, one woman, she had everything on boxes. You would have never have known, not in a million years. Uh, just fascinating how really excellent presenters show up you were gonna ask a question no no i i just uh it's just this just fast i've enjoyed this conversation so the key points here if you want to look at the uh the directory it's been going along on the ticker day below if you're a speaker who is interested in applying you've got it up here and i i just want to Thank you for taking the initiative for doing this because there's so much thought, so much rigor that's in this. That, uh, I, I truly appreciate it. And it's an honor to be part of this community. And that, that's why when I found out that you're doing what? You're doing what? Because I had no clue about your committee of four until we had our interview. And we did what? Uh, and it's, it's like, my God, that's it's. Just incredible the thinking that's gone through this. I, I, you know, I so appreciate that, and I do appreciate that you said. You know, people got to hear this. They don't. They just don't know. And I think that it's really important for people to recognize that when somebody brings a speaker to their client, to their conference, to their. Uh, and they're paying for this, that there's just a, a whole different level of expectation. And so this is really, if you're, if you are looking to be paid, if you've been paid, if you've, the value you're bringing is so critically important. And are you doing in a way of excellence? So I, when I share, and you know that I've shared, um, 
this with others. You know what's really interesting, Robbie? Ask me what's really interesting because this is interesting. Tell me, me. What's really interesting? Speaker bureaus have been coming okay. to us. Really? So speaker bureaus have said, you know, I've seen this thing about your power women worldwide. I've looked at the directory. Uh, tell me more about it. I want to share. I want to learn more about who these people are because they don't have an evaluation process in the same way. No. And so this is kind of a becoming a, a seal of approval for them. They're fascinated with the like you were with the depth and the scope of evaluation. So it's not just I write that list, that writing piece, the interview. It's these four committee people who are right. also doing it that that are not. They're not affiliated with. Um, Team Pegeen, you know, and, and you know, I, I'm going to keep on stressing also the diversity of them as well. Yeah, I love it, that. It's the diversity who reflects who the people are, because mm -hmm. we want to have people who are watching us. Are you referable? Right. right. So if they're watching us, would they refer you? Would they talk about you? We really want to know uh, I can hire her. I can hire him. I can be satisfied with what I'm bringing. And then the other piece is, you know, does the ultimate decision maker, the guy in the back, the, the person, the resistor, I'll call them, the one that's looking at the dollar bill that's not really intimately involved in the selection, are they satisfied? Right. And I think that is something really, really, really important. And... And it's, it, I want people to know how awesome you are. I really do. I want people to know how awesome, which is why we do the promotion, which is why we're, we're putting it out there, which is why meeting, you know, that's why speaker viewers are hearing about it. You know, we, we go in, I have, um, we just did a, oh, this is good for you to know. So we just did a LinkedIn investment to ensure that we have um, the right CMP certified meeting professionals in our Ross in our in our group in, in you know in my in my place where I can just share this. So we're doing a campaign now where we're sharing the directory to all the CMPs so they're aware. Just be aware. And so that's what I think a certification is supposed to do, you know, it, it's, <laughs> and I, I heard somebody say, Oh, the only reason somebody's doing this is uh, looking for a quick way to make money. Trust me. <laughs> you know, if you look at yeah, how you're many making so are, much money off of this, I, I, I really am. I'm just, I'm charging <laughs> so much money. Uh, and most importantly is, you know, if you're in it and you're not receiving what you need to do, you know, we're, we're going to be honest and we're going to tell you, no, you know, you're not there yet. And here's why. And you're going to come back and you could come back. You're not going to pay again. When you start feeling that you're ready, you could come back and That's then, generous. and that do that again. You know, this is so, about our industry, right? Yeah. And, the reality is this is the new reality uh you know it's going to be let's be realistic it's going to be a year at least before we're able to go back to in-person meetings the way they were but even by that point we'll be so used to virtual that all meetings are going to be hybrid there's going to be a blend a mix uh and it's going to be critical to for someone to be effect as effective as online Virtually as they are in person. I I am I am a bubble zapper. Okay, <laughs> I, I just want to be a little bit of a bubble zapper. So let's look at that from an industry perspective. Mm -hmm. One is most managers are now between the ages of 30, 31, and 45. Most of them have grown up with this. Most of them watch all the time on this. Most of them do their work on this. Most of them 
you know, like their free time. They really, you know, it's been over at least 20 years that association groups have been writing how people don't want to attend conferences. Now they really don't want to attend conferences. But this age group, if they're going to a conference, it's a pleasure conference. In other words, they don't even think of it as a you know, Comic Con. They go because it's pleasurable. They go to a tech conference because it's fun, not because it's a place where they're going to do a lot of in this kind of learning they like this now in that age group also they have been gamers a lot of them have been gamers they are so used to being trained and talked to in this vehicle they like this now let's add this all of the students all of the MBA grad students all of this now are all taking the courses virtual online yeah. they know this this they know this better than we know this so their expectations is why why would we go live now let's look at the financial all right if you and i were at a conference i'd have to be pay for food and beverage that's a yeah. lot of money in a conference budget i would have to pay for av staging look at this i have my own stage over here you didn't pay a bloody dollar for it so I'd have to pay staging and all that. I'd have to pay for union. And I'm not saying that these men, men and women shouldn't be paid. I'm just saying that from a business perspective, this is what I'm looking for. I have to be, pay for your flights, your food, and all of that. I'd have to pay for uh, beds, beds, and, and, yep. and freak out. Are we going to meet our beds? So all of that, <laughs> think about the cost. Oh, so one of the association members was, we were talking about this and he said he pays $30,000 just for coffee at one of his conferences. Yeah. So now listen to this. Now he doesn't have to pay any because I'm the one that brings my own stuff. And you now, get the coffee you like. Now he doesn't pay for AV. <laughs> this is my AV. So from a business perspective, it's going to be, you're going to really have to prove what the value is of going live. But the flip side of that, though, it's not that it's, you know, this is the cost stream, though, because uh, it's not that it's free. You, you need, you may not need AV, but you need someone behind the scenes who knows how to produce an online event. Totally and agree. An expense there. And, you know, to be able to train the speakers who aren't used to doing how to do it, to, to get comfortable with the technology. So there's an expense. There's, it's not free. There is still. A, it's not free. Expense, there is. But it's absolutely. way less than what it was. But it's I don't have to pay for a bed. I don't have to pay for yeah. coffee. I don't have to pay. So, yes, I have to pay for the technology. And I mean, this is a whole nother story place that we could talk about that from a speaker's perspective, of what we're investing in ourselves and not charging our clients for, right? Right. So that's a whole different story. But in a virtual world, this is not going away in a year no. or two. This is it's a new reality. Away. This is a new reality. This is. Well, everyone will have tra travels gone from their budgets. They're not going to know how to put it back in. But they won't have know how to put it. But, but I, you know, I'm. I will say in 10 years time, you are going to see, you will see hybrids, but where before it was, it, you know, virtual maybe was 10% of training dollars and convention dollars. I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you that it's going to flip. Yep. It's going to flip. And there's going to be more, way more investment in quality conference experiences. There's going to be way more invest uh, virtual. There's going to be way more investment being placed in the experience of bringing together people. There's going to be way more expectation. Well, there already is now expectation of the quality of the presenter because yes. presenters are have to know how to do this well. Yeah. Well, Pagin, I really, once again, just thank you so much for taking this step, setting this up, uh, because it, it's it's a, such a critical piece into this world that we're moving into. It sure is. It's 
It's a whole new world. <laughs> it is, and it's fun. It is. So it is. The, the links are there, folks, uh, whether you're looking at for the directory or a speaker who's interested in getting uh, evaluated for the designation. Uh, it's And the, uh, I've got, got to say the support is amazing that Vivian and her team provide. Thank you. Well, and, I, you know, and for those of you that don't like writing a whole bunch, let's go to Teen Pegeen. That we, I put the logo, the directories right there up front so that you can just get in and really challenge yourself. I, I, this is the reality. Yeah. And we are not going back. Mm -mm. Not happening. No way. Well, thank you. And thanks to those tuning in. And teampagin.com is the place to go. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Love you. Bye-bye.